What is a cervical rib? So cervical rib is an addition.
Now in the forearm, it lies central position in between flexor digitorum superficies and flexor digitorum profundus. Then it forms a branch for the anterior, anterior interosseous nerve to serve the deep muscles. Ultimately, it goes inside the hand, the lateral to palmaris longus and medial to the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. Now it goes uh, inside the palm deep to the flexor retinaculum through the carpal tunnel. In the palm, it lies medial to the thinner eminence and gives cutaneous branches to lateral three and a half digits, including their nerves. Now let's see the branches. Like every other nerve, this must this nerve also have four types of branches: muscular branch, cutaneous branch, articular, and muscular branch. For muscular branch, it supplies all of the flexor muscles of forearm except the flexor carpialis and the medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. Then it goes inside the palm and gives, uh, gives supply to the thinner muscles and first and second lumbricals. As the cutaneous branches, it gives major palmar cutaneous branch to the skin over the um, skin or the thinner muscle and gives palmar digital branch to supply the skin lateral of lateral three and a half digits. Then it gives articular branch to the elbow joint and many other joints of the hand. Then the vascular branch is to the brachial artery. Let's go to the clinical anatomy portion. We have a major syndrome called the Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. This is the entrapment mononeuropathy caused by compression of median nerve under flexor retinaculum. Yeah, the losses are mainly osteoarthritic changes, hypothyroidism, and um, lunate bones, uh, displacement anteriorly, obesity, and pregnancy. Now let's see the symptoms. Symptoms are like wasting of thinner muscles, thumbs get adapted and extended, loss of opposition of thumb, loss of sensation over three and a half lateral digits, and extension of metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion of interphalangeal joint of index and middle finger. So how do we diagnose this? With the help of Kinell's sign, Talon's sign and nerve conduction velocity test. Treatment is usually surgical decompression of median nerve. Now the eighth hand deformity. It is the median nerve palsy due to injury at forearm. Symptoms are allied carpal tunnel syndrome. A post placing hand or benediction sign. This is the injury of median nerve supplying the flexor digitorum profundus in the proximal forearm. The person is unable to flex his index and middle finger. Now the pointing index. This is a sign of injury of median nerve supplying the tendon of flexor digitorum superficialis muscles supplying to index finger. Now the pronator teres syndrome. It is a compression neuropathy, compression neuropathy of median nerve. At the carpal, at the cubital fossa between the two heads of pronator teres. Symptoms are weakness of muscles supplied by median nerve and it is also diagnosed by nerve conduction velocity test. There is also a similar type of similar type of syndrome called the anterior interosseous syndrome, which is the compression of anterior interosseous nerve. Thank you. I am like now I like to invite Rama Bhai for further discussion about the anterior nerve. Good morning, respected teachers and my batchmates. I am Rama Koyal, going to discuss about the ulnar nerve, one of the most important nerve of the brachial plexus. <coughs> ulnar nerve, the nerve of fine movements or musician nerve. It is known as the musician nerve as it controls the fine movements of the finger. Now it comes the origin and the root value. The medial cord of root value. The medial cord of root valus C8 and P1 and the lateral cord of root valus C7 of the anterior division of the lower trunk of brachial plexus together form the ulnar nerve of root value C7, C8 and C1. Now comes the courses and the relations. Ulnar nerve lies in the axilla between the axillary vein and the axillary artery on the deeper plane. 
At the middle of the arm, he pierces the medial intermuscular septum along with the superior ulnar collateral vessel and ulnar nerve passes behind the medial epicondyle <coughs> and enters the forearm. It supplies the two heads of lethal carpi ulnary and the medial half of the lethal iridium profile. It passes superficial to flexor retinaculum through the and through gyne canal enters the palm. After passing superficially through the flexor retinaculum, it enters the palm and divided into two branches: the superficial branch and the deep branch. The superficial branch supplies the palmaris brevis and the medial one and half of the digit, and the deep deep branch supplies all the muscles except the three tenon muscles and the first and second labrum. Now branches. Mus ulnar nerves has in the forearm has three four branches. The muscular branch which supplies the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor carpi ulnaris. In the cutaneous branch, dorsal cutaneous branch supplies the medial half of the dorsum of the hand. Palmar cutaneous branch supplies the medial one third of the palm. Digital branch supplies the medial one and half finger, nail bed, and dorsal aspect of the distal pharynx. And the muscular and articular branch supplies the digital vessels and the joints of the medial side of the hand. In branches, the hand has two branches: the deeper, uh, the superficial branch and the deep branch. The superficial branch supplies the palmaris brevis, and the deep branch supplies the muscles of hypothenar laminis, the medial two labricals, then four dorsal intrusive, four palmar intrusive, and the three pollicis, and may supply the deep head of the flexor pollicis longer. Sorry, for brevis. Ulnar nerve injury. It, uh, ulnar nerve injury is uh, common site is at the elbow and at the wrist. At elbow, the cubital tunnel syndrome is one of the important clinical aspects or clinical syndromes of this ulnar nerve injury. The injury of the ulnar nerve at elbow that may occur, this syndrome is due to the fracture, dislocation of the medial epicondyle and compression between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. Injury at the wrist. The ulnar nerve injury at wrist is due to a superficial position which makes it vulnerable to cuts and, cuts and wounds and compression in the gyne scan. Characteristic clinical features Claw hand deformity affecting the ring and the little finger is known as the ulnar claw hand and atrophy and the flattening of the hypothenar ending. Loss of abduction and adduction of the finger. The combination of the median and the ulnar nerves at the elbow cause a true complete claw hand deformity. Ulnar paradox. If ulnar nerve is injured at the elbow, the clawing of the finger is less than if injury at the wrist. And this is called the ulnar paradox. In case of distal injury, the clawing of the finger is more as index takes the digital profile respecting the disease more. Clinical test for the ulnar nerve injury. That is the Froman sign. Patients hold the card between the thumb and the index finger but compensatory flexion of the interphalangeal joint of thumb. Muscles affected adductor policies. Muscle. Thank you. I would like to request Ani sir to come on the stage and discuss about the radial nerve. Thank you Raja for inviting me on the stage. Good morning for my speeches and my guests present here. I want you sir. And today I will be discussing about the radial nerve. So, let's see the formation of radial nerve. Radial nerve forms from the posterior part of radial plexus, that is posterior part, and that is the radial nerve, organized from the posterior part. And it has the root value of cervical 5, 6, 7, and 8, and first thoracic 5 degrees. And, uh, and it is the largest branch of radial plexus. Let's see the course of relation with axilla. Radial nerve forms in axilla and it passes behind the third part of the axillary artery and it lies anterior to the muscles of posterior wall of axilla, which is formed by subscapularis, teres major, and latissimus dorsal muscle. Then it descends downward and it passes between the long and medial head of the bracket and leads the axilla to the lower triangular space. Then see the course in arm, it enters the arm through spiral groups across the posterior surface of humerus between the lateral and medial interface bracket and here it is accompanied by a profound bracket arm. Then in the anterior compartment of arm, it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum with radial collateral artery 
Then it enters the front pleura between brachial radialis and extensor carpal radialis proper, laterally and brachialis medial. Then comes division uh, at superior lateral angle of cubital fossa in front of lateral epicondyle, one centimeter lateral the tendon of biceps, radial nerve divides into two branches. One is deep branch of radial nerve or it is known as posterior epicondyle nerve and another one is superior branch of radial nerve. Then see the course of deep branch, it passes between the superficial and deep strata of supernatal muscle and before piercing the supernatal it provides its first branch to distance the carpal radial space. Then the deep branch descends downward and it enters the back of the forearm where it supplies all the extensor muscles of, of uh, back of the forearm and the deep branch also uh, takes part in articular branches which is supplying the inferior radio anal joint, this joint and carpal joints. And the deep branch of radial nerve aims at the forming of superior radial behind the carpals at the least. Then see the course of the superficial branch of radial nerve. It descends along the radial border of forearm and then it causes the group of the anatomical snub box, the anatomical snub box. And it supplies the ski over the lateral half of dorsum of hand and lateral three and a half degrees except the leg phase because it is supplied by the median nerve. This is the branch of axilla. In the axilla, in the axilla it has a two muscular branch, long and medial head of press bracket and one cutaneous branch or the sensory branch known as posterior cutaneous nerve of arm. In spiral group or radial group, radial nerve has three muscular branch, nerve to lateral and medial head of press bracket, nerve to anconius, and the two cutaneous branches are posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm and lower lateral nerve of arm. Then anterior compartment of lower arm, it has three muscular branches, small and lateral part of brachialis, brachioradialis and extensor carpal radialis longus, and one anterior branch supplied to the elbow joint. Then moving on to the radial nerve, clinical anatomy of radial nerve, one of the most common Critical feature is satellite and palsy, which is basically the compression of radial nerve at the spiral groove, which leading to the temporary paralysis of extensor muscles of forearm. And it also may occur due to falling acid with one some hanging on the over of the uh, armless structure, compressing the radial nerve and the, red, and the spiral groove. Now, uh, how can diagnose the patient? Uh, you can see the signs and symptoms. You know, in the patient will have the disc drop. Loss of supervision, numbness on the back of hand and wrist, and inability to voluntarily scale in the finger. Then, uh, one another uh, clinical aspect is radial tunnel syndrome. Most of the interruptions now gets compressed during supernatal muscle, and in this case, there won't be complete disorder due to intact extensive hyperdeterminous longus muscle. So, thank you. Now, I would like to invite Thank you, Manish, for inviting me on the stage. Good morning, my respected teachers and my batchmates. Today, I will discuss about the other important parts of brachial plexus. So, first one is the branching of the root. If the dorsal scapula nerve, it supplies the rhomboid medial muscle and the rhomboid minor and the levator scapula. Then the long thoracic nerve is also called the nerve of the breath. It supplies the cellular anterior muscle. Some clinical anatomy is regulated with winning of scapula. It is often due to the excessive pressure on the shoulder carrying heavy loads due to interaction of long thoracic nerve supply. The symptoms associated with it is the excessive prominence of the medial border of the scapula. Loss of the prostraction of the scapula, arm of a fraction due to action of the rhomboid major and minor muscle, and weakness in elevation of arm during abduction, and loss of the pushing and punching action. It also causes the swimmer's palsy. Now the branching of the trunk. First one is the suprascapular nerve. It is the largest branch of the upper trunk. It supplies the supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus muscle. Next one is the nerve to subclavius. It supplies the subclavius muscle. Then the branching of the lateral cord. It supplies the pectoralis major and minor muscle and it pierces the clavicular fascia. Then musculocutaneous nerve. It supplies the major 
part of the brachialis, molecular brachialis, and the righteous stomach. It terminates as lateral cutaneous mark 2 cm above the end of the elbow. Then the branching of the medial cord. First one is the pectoral nerve. It supplies pectoral is major and minor muscle. Then the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. It pierces deep fascia, supplies the skin over the medial aspect of the distal part of the upper arm. Then the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. It supplies the skin over the biceps almost to the elbow. Then we will talk about the branching of the posterior cord. It's the upper subscapular nerve. It supplies the subscapular muscle at higher level. Then lower subscapular nerve. It supplies the subscapular at lower level and spirits major muscle. Then one of the important nerves that is the thoracodorsal nerve. It supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle. Now we will discuss about the additional information on the surgical importance related to thoracodorsal nerve. It is a nerve of great concern during breast cancer procedures, including axillary dissection. A portion of thoracodorsal nerve is commonly used in nerve grafting reconstruction to restore the nerve function after injury to several nerves, including the muscular cutaneous nerve, accessory nerve, and the axillary nerve. Then, the another important nerve it is the axillary or circumflex nerve. It passes horizontally through the quadrangular space where it is accompanied by posterior circumflex cingulate artery. It mainly supplies the teres minor muscle and the brain muscle. Some clinical aspects related with it is uh, the axillary nerve is complex, then the deltoid muscle cannot work properly, the power of forward flexion is uh, lost and the attraction is reduced to almost 30 to 40 percent of normal. The loss of the rounded contour of the shoulder. Then the Hilton's law. It is taken by the John Hilton. The law states that the nerve which supplies the joint also furnish branches to the group of muscles regulating the movement of the joint and the skin over the joint. A classical example of it is axillary nerve which satisfies the Hilton's law. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Shourav Chowdhury, who will discuss about the last topic of the Moses seminars, the clinical anatomy related with brachial plexus. So thank you, Sajida, for inviting me on the dais. Uh, very good morning to my respected teachers, our respected <coughs> and my dear batchmates. So till now we have seen that the rest of my team members have already given you the introduction to the brachial plexus. They have also discussed about the important nerves and the clinical aspects. So in this part of the presentation, I will be highlighting on the major clinical aspects related with the brachial plexus. So firstly, we have the earth duchin palsy, which is named after its discoverer Wilhelm Earth and Duchin D. Bologni. So the introduction to it is, it is paralysis of arm caused by injury to the upper trunk of brachial plexus, specifically at the earth point where there is emergent of six important nerve fibers, uh, namely the ventral ramai of the cervical fifth and cervical sixth spinal segment, the suprascapular nerve, the nerve to subclavius, uh, and the anterior and posterior divisions of the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. So you can see in this picture, which is showing you the earth point. So moving on to the next slide, the etiology of all vision palsy. So the first cause may be the difficulty in childhood. So as you can see in this picture, if one of the shoulder is depressed and the head is flexed to the opposite side of the shoulder, there may be unopposed traction of the brachial plexus, which may lead to its stretching and ultimately the injury to the brachial plexus is caused. Now the second cause may be the trauma to the shoulder, so which may be due to uh, motor vehicle accident or a severe fall of a heavy object directly over the shoulder. Now the third cause may be gunshot wounds. Now the main nerves involved are suprascapular nerve, axillary nerve, musculocutaneous nerve and the nerve to subclavius. Now moving on to the next slide. Now as both nerves were being injured, the corresponding muscles involved, which will also be paralyzed are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, deltoid, teres minor, biceps brachii, brachialis, the medial muscle part of it, the subclavius. Now the movement loss which takes place is adduction and medial rotation at shoulder joint. Now the adduction takes place due to paralysis of the abductors of the shoulder joint, that is the supraspinatus and the deltoid. Now the medial rotation takes place due to the loss of the activity of the lateral rotators of the arm that is the infraspinatus and there is extension at the elbow joint. Now due to the 
paralysis of the flexors of the arm that is the biceps brachii and the brachialis. Now there is pronation at a radioulnar joint due to the paralysis of the strong spinnaker of our upper limb that is the biceps brachii. So moving on to the next slide, the deformity is commonly known as the radial strip or the policeman strip hand for obvious reasons. Now there is atrophy of deltoid muscle for which there is loss of the rounded contour of the shoulder, not a sensory loss. Now the areas affected are loss of sensation on lateral side of arm and forearm. So in this picture you can see the lateral side of the arm and forearm is generally affected. Now the type of sensation affected is the deep sense which involves sensation at the muscular and joint level and the superficial sense which involves the superficial level. So in the next slide we have the trophic changes. Now there is vasomotor change due to loss of vasoconstriction which will lead to vasodilation and redness of the adjusted area. Now there is pseudomotor change due to impairment of the sweat glands leading to dry and scaly skin. Now there is pylomotor change due to loss of innervation of the adductor pylorum muscle. Now the prognosis which is generally very poor and it leads to lack of muscular development See in this picture. There is lack of muscular development which, uh, which leads to the arm being much weaker than the unaffected one. Now the treatment may be nerve transplant. So our next topic of discussion is the Clumke's paralysis, which is named after its discoverer, Augusta Clumke, in 1859-1927. So it is the effect of the lower front injury of the brachial plexus involving the C8 and T1, the right spinal segments. Now when there is upward traction that is forced absorption, example is forcible beach delivery, may result in lower brachial plexus lesion. So involving C8 and T1. Now the main thing to be remembered is that the root of lateral plexus T1, which is the first thoracic spinal segment, is the chief segment concerned with the supply of the atrophic muscles of hand. So its paralysis will lead to producing the claw hand. So the nerve roots, as I have already discussed, mainly T1 is affected and partly C8. And the muscles paralyzed are the atrophic muscles of hand, which involves the lumbricals, inner eminence, the hypothenar eminence. Now there is uh, paralysis of the earlier plexus of the wrist and fingers as well due to the C8 cervical spinal segment. Now the deformity and position of hand, there is claw hand due to unopposed actions of the long extensor and plexus of the fingers. See, as you can see in this picture. Now in the claw hand, there is hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint over here and flexion at the interphalangeal joints. Now the disability which involves this, this claw hand, now there is cutaneous anesthesia and analgesia in the narrow zone along the ulnar border of forearm and hand. Now one very important clinical syndrome related to the Clumke's paralysis is the Horner syndrome. Now if T1 is injured proximal to white ramus communicants to the first thoracic hepatic ganglion, there may be ptosis, uh, sorry, partial ptosis, meiosis and hydrosis due to anophthalmos and loss of serious spinal reflex may be associated. Now what happens is ptosis is that there is drooping of eyelids, but in this case it will be partial ptosis, so there will be partial drooping of eyelids. Now there is meiosis, which means there is constriction of the pupil, and hydrosis due to impairment of the sweat glands, pubic anophthalmos, which is the sunken line, and loss of serial spinal reflex. So what is actually serial spinal reflex? In normal cases what happens is, if you give a painful stimulus to the side of your neck, the pupil gets dilated, but in this case, as there is loss of serial spinal reflex, the pupil will generally be constricted. So, our next topic of discussion is the compression of brachial plexus by the cervical rib. Now, what is a cervical rib? So, a cervical rib is an additional rib, see in this picture, the cervical rib is being highlighted. So, which arises from the seven cervical vertebra and which is usually attached to the first rib, close to the insertion of scalenous anterior. So, this is scalenous anterior muscle. Now the next slide, uh, we have relation of cervical rib with the brachial plexus. Now at the exit from the neck, see over here, so in the first image, the brachial plexus and the subtalian artery passes through a narrow triangle which is bounded by the two scaling muscles, the scaling anterior and the scaling medial, middle and the first rib. Now the first rib generally forms the base of the triangle, thus these two structures are bound to be angular. If not compressed, when the base of this triangle is raised by the presence of a cervical rib, uh, it, it forces its way between the nerve and first, the, and the first rib, which leads to the complication. Now, the complications due to cervical rib. Now, cervical rib is more often unilateral and more frequently on the right hand side of the body. In 90% of cases, cervical rib probably causes no trouble. In the remainder, complications may be neurological, vascular, or local. 
So our final topic of discussion will be on the brachial plexus block. Now what is the brachial plexus block? So it is a regional anesthesia technique. See, as you can see here, it's being operated. Now sometimes employed as an adjunct to general anesthesia for surgical property activity. It involves injection of local anesthetic agents, proximity to brachial plexus for temporary for temporarily blocking the sensation and ability to move the upper extremity. So subject can be sedated or fully exercised if necessary. So thank you. So this was the end of the presentation. Now